everyone. Well, today we are picking up in Matthew 7, and we're going to be talking about the first six verses that have to do with judgment. So let's go ahead and read that passage. It starts in verse 1, and this is what it says. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred, and do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. You know, sometimes when I think about the world that my parents and grandparents grew up in, I imagine a much simpler way of life. Imagine a, a life where face-to-face -face interaction was still really cool, not interaction behind screens. Um, I imagine flying being much easier than it is today. Um, I imagine being able to ride your bike and walk to school and play outside from morning until night without a care in the world, which is certainly not the case today. But another thing I imagine about their life was that food was a lot simpler. In the last 15 years, there has been a drastic rise in allergies and dietary preferences and even just health trends. I mean, nowadays you can be a paleo lifestyle, you can follow a keto lifestyle, you can be sugar-free or dairy-free, you can be vegan, strictly organic. There are some <coughs> diets that I have to look up because I don't even know what they mean, um, like the flexitarian <laughs> diet and the uh, DNC diet, the DASH diet, the Mayo Clinic diet, and the list just goes on and on and on. So you have the vegan who doesn't consume any animal products but allows themselves to eat as many carbs as they want. And then you have the person who follows a keto lifestyle who consumes mainly animal products and very little carbs. So the big question is, who's right and who's wrong? What's the one right way to be? When we look at this scripture, it starts with a pretty strong statement. It says, don't judge or you too will be judged. If you do, you'll be judged in the same way. And then he says, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. The saying measure for measure was an old Jewish saying that was used for trade when balancing goods, buying and selling. So the disciples would have immediately known what this meant when Jesus said it. But what kind of judgment is Jesus talking about here when he says this? See, we know that we have a responsibility to judge ourselves, our own actions, to hold ourselves accountable but the kind of judgment that Jesus is warning us against here is making our word a law to those around us. Yeah. It's making our subjective opinions and our preferences for our way of living absolute truth to those who are around us. And it's also assuming the worst in people. But because we are flawed humans, we can easily get caught up in the judgment of the meat eater versus the vegetarian. I think what Jesus was trying to say here in this passage is to remind us that he's far more concerned with our own spiritual health than our opinion of the health of others. Now, although there are clearly times in scripture where we are called to lovingly walk with one another, to hold each other accountable according to what the Bible says, Jesus uses this convicting illustration of the speck of sawdust and the plank to let us know that most of the time, our eyes and our words should be pointed at our own hearts and not at the hearts of others. Because constantly pointing out our brother's sin will usually lead to the neglect of looking at the sin in our own life. See, we can spend our life looking at the sins, the downfalls, and the flaws of others. And most of the time, it'll come at the expense of neglecting our own sin. See, there's not a whole lot that I can do to affect someone's personal decisions, but I can always take a step in the direction of removing sin in my life. Yeah. I can always try to be a better wife, a mom, a Christ follower, a daughter, because what I know to be true is this. When I get to the end of my life, there's only one person's salvation that I am accountable for, yeah. and that's my own. Yeah. So what Jesus is reminding us here, and our takeaway for you and for me today is to understand that there are people all around us who are on their own faith journey. Yeah. And there are people who yeah. grew up differently than us, who have attended different churches mm -hmm. than us, who have come from different walks of faith. And we're always better when we choose to love, understand, walk with one another. Right. Yeah. It's 
always better for us when we choose to act, look, and become more like Jesus. Yeah.